Welcome to our Costa Rica Echo Adventure webinar. This is about one of our most popular tours. Um, we ran two this year, or one in December and one you just returned from a couple of weeks ago, I think, uh, Martine, didn't you? And you're going to tell us a little bit about what that was all about. But before we get into Costa Rica, let me take a few moments to explain what we are all about at Wheel and Anchor for those of you who are new. And if you aren't new, if you've heard this spiel uh, a dozen times already, then just uh, just bear with me for a moment for the benefit of um, all those who have not participated in our Wheel and Anchor webinars. Wheel and Anchor is a community of travelers from all across Canada. Um, the community came to being uh, because about five years ago when we got started, um, and I'd been organizing trips for Canadians for um, it's coming up 34 years. Hard to believe. I don't. I don't. I don't consider myself to be that old. <laughs> um, and uh, when we sort of looked at uh, the state of travel in Canada, the one thing that I realized that was a little bit missing was um, sort of like the the opportunity for people to come together and get to know each other. Um, and it is this notion of like mindedness in the context of travel. What does that mean? I'm not going to go into a, a long diatribe about that, but if you've joined us recently, you've read our Traveler's Creed, it gives you a little bit of taste what that means. It's it's an attitude towards travel. It's an attitude towards other cultures, um, to, to going out and foraying and exploring and trying things, but at the same time being respectful. And it's that nature that is inherent to our members at Wheel and Anchor that is really what differentiates us from uh, uh, just sort of ordinary travel companies in the market. There are a number of things that di differentiate us, but this is a key mission for us. I'm here right now in Thailand, actually hosting a, a yoga and wellness trip um, as we speak. If you're watching the recording, um, then uh, it's now February of uh, 2024. And, uh, you know, I've, I've watched a group of people who largely didn't know each other uh, emerge and uh, come together and become like almost like it seems like best friends and you know they're a couple of weeks into a, a trip here um, and the memories that they make together uh, of of traveling and, and having all these experiences in the wheel and anchor fashion is what uh, is what we're all about uh, and so uh, that's our goal that you not only become well-traveled, of course, we're here as a travel company to show you all these amazing places around the world and to do it, again, in the wheel and anchor way at a slightly slower pace, um, going a little bit off the tourist mainstream track in smaller groups, all those great things. But it's really about the people that makes the difference and becoming connected to all those people along the way. So that's what the wheel and anchor philosophy is all about. Um, uh, just a few slides here, and Martine could perhaps chime in and comment on this. These are uh, shots from 2023, so a year ago uh, when we were in Costa Rica. And obviously, you've just come back, and we haven't got a chance to take all those great photos from this year's trip. Um, but this gives you a little bit of a taste. You can see Martine down here uh, mm -hmm. on the left-hand side. And this will bring back some memories from you about, about all the great uh, times that you had on that trip and uh, the, the, the members that you met along the way, yeah? Yeah, no, definitely. And I think you said it well when you say that we have a, a certain a certain je ne sais quoi here at Wheel and Anchor. People that come on these trips, they really gel. There's just something about, uh, you know, everyone's coming in with the same kind of philosophy of wanting to live something authentic and, and something off the beaten track, you know, so it's really fun. Our last group just gelled exactly like you just said yours is. So everyone, you know, becomes BFFs and next thing you know, and, and their circles get bigger and now they have, you know, Fun places they can visit them, you know, in different places in Canada, because a lot of our, of course, our people are from Canada. But yeah, we just had such a great time. This is another group that was a, some of some people from December. And we haven't added anything because literally they're just taking flights off today and leaving today. So we didn't take add any photos of the group that just left. But wow, we had a great just every. You can see by all the smiles on the faces and the mud in the face. And it's about <laughs> getting your hands dirty or your faces dirty. Um, yeah. And you know, that's and all the fun that's had along the way. But I yeah. mean, I think the important thing I, to mention here about Costa Rica, because, you know, as as Canadians, Costa Rica is in every travel brochure and every travel agency. But we're not talking about that Costa Rica. This is an echo adventure. This is about going to these places in Costa Rica that that the naturalists go to because you have some of the best biodiversity in the world. Martin, you're going to share a little bit about that with us before we get into the nitty gritty. Let's just introduce the team. My name is Gordon Dreger. I'm the founder of Wheel and Anchor, curator of all the tours. Um, and I say curator of all the tours, but I work very closely 
with Martine in this case, you know, we've, well, Martine largely has worked out this amazing itinerary because you know, she just has so much experience there. I mean, you're obviously there now. I mean, you, <laughs> and so you live there part of the year, basically. So this is what I mean by, you know, we, we work with um, local people who really understand the lay of the land, what we're all about. Obviously, we have our amazing team of trip specialists, um, Barb, who's with us today on the webinar this morning. Uh, good morning, Barb. Uh, good morning. Barb, Barb and Paul are there to answer all your questions uh, and uh, make sure that uh, this is the right trip for you. Um, this is not a trip for everybody. And, and as we go through the itinerary, you'll get a, a sense of why. So today, we're going to take you a little bit around Costa Rica. Um, myself, obviously, actually, Martine is going to do most of the talking because she talks it up far better than I can because uh, of her extensive firsthand experience in all of these amazing regions. This trip we're going to be doing twice next year. Um, and uh, it, as I said at the outset, takes in some of the most uh, interesting uh, natural parts of the country. So there's no beaches in here. Well, actually, it's not true. There is uh, an opportunity that you're at the sea at the end in the Osa Peninsula. But this is not going to Tamarindo or, or, or Manuel Antonio or any of that stuff. Um, which are lovely places to go, but this is about exploring the uh, incredible flora and fauna that uh, that Costa Rica has to offer. The trip begins and ends in San Jose, the capital. Uh, we spend a bunch of days, the first half, more than half the trip, I think, in the highlands, in the mountains of Costa Rica. And again, Martin's going to talk about this in detail in a minute. Um, and again, this is a unique uh uh, ecosystem here because of the altitude, because of this cloud forest, uh, and all these aspects that give it the um, the amazing, you know, animal life that we have here. Even more so, the Osa Peninsula down in the south is considered, I think, by, um, is it UNESCO or National Geographic that says that this is the most biodiverse place in the world? Mm -hmm. National Geographic. Mm -hmm. National Geographic. So the latter part of the trip takes into that. And this is where most of the tourists don't go that go to Costa Rica, particularly from Canada. Um, and that's why we're bringing you there because it's such an incredible and important. If you've been to the Amazon, and I know a lot of our members have not been to the Amazon, but it's it's like that and more. Um, and yet it's only a few hours flight away. So let's, let's get into it, Martine, without further ado. As we mentioned, we begin in San Jose, an easy place to get to from most places in Canada. There's flights in because, of course, of all of the sun destinations, the beach destinations. So San Jose is a, is a very, it's a, you know, good, what, four or five hour flight from depending on which part of the country you're flying from. Uh, and uh, almost the same time zone or at least uh, comparable to time zones in Canada. Um, and we arrive in, we, we have a night there where everybody gathers together because, of course, our members will fly in from all parts of Canada. We have a lovely family run hotel uh, that is uh, just a short drive from the airport. Um, tell us about that experience. And I know a number of members actually flew in early because they were keen to see San Jose itself. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. So San Jose in itself, of course, is not necessarily the draw for Costa Rica. It's a, maybe a, a city that's, that's <laughs> for sure not history, uh, but it definitely has a lot of culture. So some people have opted to come earlier. You do not have to, though, uh, because we have included so many other amazing things in the trip. But if you do want to come earlier, you can. And we start actually our trip by uh, introducing you to coffee, which is obviously one of the big attractions here in Costa Rica. Uh, and we're not spending much time here. We're going to be moving on from the capital pretty quickly. We're going right up into um, a different area of the country where we're going to Savegre Lodge, which is an area called San Gerardo de Dota. Mm. It's an area that is, if you are a birder or even not consider yourself a birder, you will become one. Uh, just to give you an idea on this trip that just finished uh, yesterday or today, uh, one person was able to identify over 150 species on their trip, which is incredible. If you think in Canada, you might get eight. Uh, so when we were here, the, the, the allure of Savegre, of course, is its environment in the in the high cloud forest, but also it's the Quetzal, the famous Quetzal, the, the resplendent Quetzal, which is what we'll be looking for. And, and we were very lucky to get this. And Savegre Lodge is one of a, a beautiful property 
here's a Quetzal right here, part of the Trogon family. Um, and so it's just a great way to start also to acclimatize because you'll be coming in the winter. <laughs> so it's not so hot right away. You're going to acclimatize in, in terms of, of the temperature. And then from there, um, I'm going to see the next slide. Um, let's see what we have here. We end up going to another area, just going down in elevation. So we start up in elevation and then we come down in elevation. So we're about 9,000 feet above sea level and we're coming down at about three to 4,000 feet at sea level. So now it's where the cloud forest meets the rainforest. This is a different environment altogether. And just to give you an idea, in this small country the size of West Virginia, we have 12 different climatic zones. So you're going to see um, two of them right there just in, within a matter of, of hours, really. And so Martin, before we go on, I just because I skipped over a couple of the slides from Savegra okay. Lodge, and I think this is one of the things that we want to address with our members is okay. what do these accommodations look like, right? So again, we're up here, yeah. way up in the mountains, as Martin just said, 9,000 feet above sea level. Um, and uh, I can only speak for the reviews because I personally haven't visited these lodges, but from the reviews that we get from our members that have visited, they just love these places because they are true echo lodges. Just tell so, us a little bit about the experience of these lodges. What's it like to stay there? What's the average day look like? Just so we get a, a taste of that. Okay, so the first thing is with Wheel and Anchor, one of the things we like to do is support local businesses. We try mm -hmm. to stay away from the large holiday inn type hotel. And we like to find yes, these really authentic places where you can feel a real separation from your world, right? We want you to be in a new world. And so Savegri Lodge is a perfect example of that. It's owned by a local family. The whole family works within this property. Um, the, the owner actually just passed away this year, but he was uh, 97 and he left wow. all of this to his children. It's incredible. And so you're going to have like a woodsy, you know, kind of you're going into like a, a very organic woodsy kind of environment, but completely comfortable. And if anyone's afraid of heat here, you do not have to be in the evening. It's actually quite cool and we have heaters. <laughs> so it's the opposite. But we're going to start at a higher elevation. So it's cooler. But during the day, it's nice and warm. It's just at night, it gets nice and cool. And so this environment. So uh -huh. Yep, go ahead. Just delicious food, really great service. You know, all of our accommodation are, I would say, above standard. Your first hotel when you come into San Jose is a basic hotel, but again, owned by a local family. Again, we want to support those local and businesses. So when you get to Savegre, you're going to see already just the amount, just incredible pura vida, which means pure life, the kind of service that you get from the Costa Ricans. And this is really what it's about and why we have worked out these places with uh Martine is because I'm for those of you that know me for a while I'm a, I'm really big on hospitality it's the core of of who I am and what we do at Wheel and Anchor and that's what these places is all about is the hospitality from the moment that you arrive throughout your stay with all of the guides uh, that, that accompany you on the various walks and treks into the forest um, this is what sets it apart from um, you know, the the sort of chain hotels or the large resort style hotels that don't give you that authentic feel of Costa Rica. Um, yeah. So I think that's a really, really important point. And why these trips have, you know, basically sold out is because, uh, you know, people know the kind of attention to detail that we have in sourcing these places. Um, so as you say, so we'll spend a few days up at uh, Savegre and then head down to Rio Charipo. Um, which is a little bit lower in elevation. And this is a very special place. Um, again, the lodge itself, very comfy, cozy, all the amenities, swimming pool. Um, I guess this is a river nearby the lodge that you can, I don't know, can you swim in that river? It looks a little dangerous. Yeah, you will. <laughs> Not that part. <laughs> but uh, basically, um, Rio Chiripo, everyone is always blown away by what you're going to live there. It's a spa experience, really. It's one of these uh, sensory experiences where all of your senses come alive. You know, food is incredible. The views are incredible. The sounds are incredible. Everything. And we're in a property right at the base of the highest mountain in Central America called Chiripo Mountain that reaches the over a thousand uh, feet above sea level. And right here, we have these beautiful rivers. Re Re Chiripo means land of eternal water. So all these beautiful water uh, ways are coming in here and gardens full of flowers, the food. Listen, you're not going to eat better. And I know a lot of us, we like to travel because we don't have to cook. <laughs> and so this has one of the best breakfasts, I think, in the world. Like I've traveled a lot of places and there's nothing that beats uh, this breakfast and also lunch and dinner. So if you want to be pampered a little, this is where you're going to want the accommodation. We base it on double occupancy in our standard rooms but we also have elevated rooms so if any of you are traveling as a couple or 
our good friends or you know family and you want to just upgrade you can upgrade to some of our bigger cabins and more you know what we call deluxe rooms and we also have different spas you know we have that this is our cedar tub we also have a pool and another hot tub so it's one of those places where you go and not many people get to experience this kind of uh eco lodge experience yeah it's and it, so this is an eco eco lodge plus because you have all these luxury yeah. amenities you know you imagine you've gone out for a day in the in the forest um, you know, searching for all these amazing birds in this way. And and then you come back and you would sort of live in the lap of luxury. And again, when we say luxuries, we're not talking about like, you know, five star four seasons hotel luxury. That's like, it, this is the, the true authentic uh, Costa Rican hospitality, but with all those amenities that we've sort of shown you in a few pictures. Um, so just to give you an idea, Gordon, someone already booked their, uh, you know, just to go on their own eventually in the future. They want to go back with family because they loved it so much, you know, just certain spots like that where you wouldn't have never found on your own. So it's a really You'd good never... opportunity to come. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And we have to book these far in advance um, yeah. because uh, these lodges get booked up in the in the high season when we're going. It, let's talk a little bit about Martine the 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 daily program. Some of the things that we're going to see along the way. We talked about flora and fauna. You talked about birds. Um, obviously the 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 flora, the 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 plant life here is just spectacular. Oh, you know, if if you are someone who likes uh, flowers, plants, this is where you are going to be introduced to a lot of them. So we're actually going to be doing a a welcome uh, to the neighborhood, kind of introducing you to a secret garden. Uh, it's not a secret, but that's what they're called, secret garden. Uh, but we're going to be going in and showing you a collection of botanical flowers and botanical plants. And this is where you're going to start getting more in touch with the natural, you know, the the, the flora here of the area. So if you enjoy that, this is definitely going to be a the, something you'll want to do. And let's see the next slide. I think we're going to be also introducing the next yes. place. Well, I, well, we're going to talk about talk about the Cloud Bridge Reserve, because, again, this idea of cloud forest and the cloud bridge is not a term that we come across every day. And this is I wouldn't say it's completely unique to Costa Rica, but it is a, it is a uh, I guess a, a biosphere of sorts, this this particular area. What is it exactly? So it's an area that was actually brought into conservation in the early 2000s and the owner at the time basically planted a lot of endemic species and so what we're seeing is a lot of the wildlife coming back to this area and within this property there is a cloud bridge an actual bridge it's much further within the property we won't be going to it however just because it's it's about a five six hour hike in but that's why they called it cloud bridge but at the same time it is also because there's a bridge between the the top of the mountains we call them sky islands and so basically within these areas there are all these different uh, pockets of very specific wildlife very specific flora and fauna so we're going to be going in this area and, and experiencing this cloud bridge reserve i say it's a little bit of a forest bathing you know just being surrounded by all these trees and all of this water and all of that and we're going to be seeing a beautiful waterfall as well here so if you like waterfalls this is definitely going to be a, a great experience for you to join and all of our hikes and people have commented how great it was is that we make it accessible for everyone you know we have some people that really love to push it and then we have some people who really want to take it easy and we're able to uh, really offer both of those uh, those experiences to everyone so it's really sad. and so describe to us what is you know you say a hike i mean are we out for eight yeah. hours we're not out for that long yeah. what what does the day look like so you get up you have breakfast you enjoy the, this beautiful scenery from the, the lodge then what happens so every day is different that's the first to be hard for me to tell you what a day looks like of course every day but i would say for example um we usually have a nice breakfast an early enough breakfast not too early not too early uh, all the time sometimes earlier uh, and then we go off for a hike around maybe the nine, 10 o'clock, and then we come back for a lunch. So we have about a, a three to four hour window in which we'll be doing an activity. And it's not that you'll be walking that whole time. There could be moments where we'll be sitting, we'll be looking, we'll be experiencing, we'll be seeing. So there's there's a lot of room for you to either um, rest within that period or push it, depending on which group you, you know, we separate sometimes the group based on who wants to go a little bit further, who wants to do this or that. So we adjust it to basically our group. But as long as you are in healthy physical condition, you can walk on uneven terrain and that you can do stairs, you have no problems joining any of these uh, trips that we're doing, any of these treks that we're doing. 
And if there's any doubt about that, I think our uh, our information document talks about our minimum mobility requirements uh, for for this and for all trips. And this trip is not special in that regard. If you um, if you can walk your ten thousand steps a day, um, you know, even if, if you have to push it a bit, but if you could do that and you can, you know, sort of walk at a decent pace, you're good to go on this trip. We're not doing any mountain climbing. We're not doing any canyoneering. We're not doing anything crazy, um, but we are going to as I say, really witness all this, uh, this amazing stuff. So quick quick words about butterflies, because I don't know, I'm a butterfly lover. And uh, I've seen some incredible uh, butterfly, uh, butterflies, both in nature and some of these uh, uh, museums around the world. Um, this is also a very special place for that. Yes, we have so much on the menu within the Chilipo when we're there. One of the things is to visit the butterfly, local butterfly dome. So you'll be able to get within this dome and see all these butterflies and learn about how butterflies, you know, uh, moths, all of these different things, just the, the life cycle of them. But just to see them is just really wonderful. So we'll be doing that. We'll be having a few little surprises as well. So you'll definitely enjoy this. Listen, every part's like three different chapters that you'll be going through. and <laughs> You're going to love this one. Yeah. So basically, it's like the first half the trip um, is up in these highlands. As Martine mentioned, the air is cool, particularly in the evening. It's such an amazing climate because you're out in the tropics and the rainforest and uh, and and then you can go to bed at night and there's no air conditioning required. It's really cool. But we then take a drive and it's a fairly long drive. We're going to drive from the central part of the country all the way down to the southwest point at mm -hmm. the Osa Peninsula. And we're going to get to this very special place called Luna Lodge. Um, before you explain about the Osa Peninsula and why this is so significant uh, as, a, as, a, as a wildlife uh, destination, let's talk about this lodge. Okay, so Luna Lodge... Uh, is owned by an individual, but one that has done incredible work at conserv conservation of the Osa itself. Her lodge is situated at the end of the road, right at the edge of Corcovan National Park. What you're watching, what you're looking right now is the ridge that separates basically her lodge and Corcovan National Park, which takes right up two thirds of the peninsula. So it's just an incredible, you're right in the center of the rainforest. To the left in this photo, you can see a little bit of the ocean. Yeah, if you point there, so you, you're we're a bit further from the ocean, but we'll be accessing the ocean often to go into the um into the the neighborhood, so you can see you know sort of the wildlife that live closer to the ocean. But it's just one of those incredible environments. M many people will never get to this point in Costa Rica. They don't know how to get there. They're not sure how to do it. But with us, it's it's uh, we're, we make it easy. And so when you're there. Howler monkeys will wake you up in the morning, you know. You'll have toucans everywhere, scarlet macaws that will be flying overhead. It's in monkeys. We have all four species of monkeys. In, we have only four in Costa Rica, and all four are there on the Osa. So this is why National Geographic calls it the most biologically intense place on Earth. If you are someone who loves wildlife, if you're someone who loves birds, or if you're someone who wants to be really enveloped by this incredible green, you know, landscape, this is the place to go. Now the Osa is more humid and is more warm, but in the evenings it can actually get cool. So all of the accommodations, we, in the, we're we doing an eco adventure. There is no air conditioning. So if that's something that pre preoccupies you, please let us know. But at the same time, we have fans and everything. And most people have realized how incredibly comfortable it was in the end. You know, they may have had some, oh, is it going to be too hot? And, but in the end, you know, during the day we're out, we're in the pool, mm. we're walking, we're doing different things. At night, we you know, we have these beautiful accommodations, bungalows. Um, and they're perfect for people sharing couples. We also have ones with king size beds um, and just wonderful. The whole way through, you'll have warm showers. You know, you don't have to worry about anything like that. Everywhere and every one of our hotels offers great amenities. Um, in this lodge as well, you'll have access to massages as well as uh, Rio Chiripo. You'll have access to uh, different things like yoga, if you're interested in doing some yoga. So there's all these um added added bonuses that will be available to you as well and things that yeah. we will you know include and, and surprise you with as well so we love, we love love the surprises at wheel and anchor so that's why we <laughs> we tell you the highlights and then there's all the other stuff that happens in between yeah, um, so we, yeah, <laughs> exactly it wouldn't be a wheel and anchor trip if there weren't for the little little fun surprises and i literally just came back from one uh, an hour ago and anyway i won't even go into it because that's we're not talking about uh we're not talking about that we're talking about costa rica um 
you mentioned again the birds. So this is a whole different bunch of birds because these guys love to live closer to sea level in the the, the tropical and the more humid part of the rainforest. Um, and so I, he, he, this is the funny thing. And I, I have not been to this part of Costa Rica, but I, I've been to the Amazon and, you know, they go on and on about birds. But even if you are somebody who is not a birder, you cannot help but be mesmerized by these flying creatures that, yeah. you know, at home we have, uh, the, you know, the usual black and gray and whatever, the occasional, you know, blue jay. But um, mm -hmm. the color, the calls, wow. We, uh, we've converted, I would say, most of the group to being birders in this trip. Uh, we have we had two that were considered, I would say, birders. And then the other ones were just, I like birds, you know. But no, everyone, they downloaded different apps and they were looking for sounds and identifying it. Listen, it's it's a it's a fun it's a fun activity. <laughs> and, I don't know how but there is so much it. more than. Yeah, there's so much more than the birds there. And this is this is really about particularly here in the OSA this vast variety of 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 creatures flying and crawling like our yeah. sloth here <laughs> <laughs> yeah like sloths we have we have you know and actually speaking of which i know a lot of people are worried about bugs there's actually less bugs here than in my sister's cottage in ontario so that would bother you why because there's such a, a healthy uh, circle of life here so you're not going to be bothered by insects like you would be for example at your own cottage in ontario or canada somewhere in canada um we have so many animals like the sloths we have the largest wildcat population in all of central america here is here like puma jaguars ocelots margays all of the above we have you know just incredible land and water you're going to be seeing also we'll be going on a dolphin boat tour you'll be seeing dolphins you may even have the chance of seeing something like um a whale you know if, if you're lucky we'll be going to bosque del cabo bosque del cabo is a property which uh, not many people have access to, but because we um, have been, you know, doing, and just to be clear, this is the, we're the only company, Wheel and Anchor, that offers this exact trip. No other company in the world offers this. And this is why it's so remarkable. And so even with Wheel and Anchor, we now have access to properties that other people won't have access to, like Bosé Cabo, where we're going to be seeing just an incredible amount of wildlife. People have seen actual uh, pumas right there sitting, you know, <laughs> to taking photos. So if you love wildlife, you're going to love this trip. And this is just it. And, you know, people talk to me all the time. Oh, you know, safaris in Africa and all the rest of it. And, you know, yeah. that is an amazing adventure in itself. But yeah. it is really hard to beat, you know, even in the Amazon rainforest, which is a vast area. And, okay. and but the concentration of animals that you find here is hard to find anywhere else in the world, which is what I, makes this such an interesting trip that you can see so much in so little time. And as you say, both marine, both forest, both high level, high to high altitude uh, type uh, flora and fauna. It's amazing. The Corcovado wow. National Park is kind of the pinnacle of the this region around the Osa Peninsula. And we offer this as an as a as a as an add on excursion. Um, and so I just want you to say a couple of words about that and about Corcovado and about this this add on that we do. Yeah. So first of all, I call it the Coles Note version of the Amazon. When you go on the <laughs> ocean, you, you see it a lot more in a smaller environment. And Corcovado is actually a perfect example of that. It's a trail that's between the ocean and the mountain. It creates a perfect corridor where you see a lot more wildlife. Mm -hmm. And Corcovado is a bucket list kind of hike. You don't have to do it, but if you want to push yourself a little bit and also have a chance of seeing maybe larger animals like tapirs, uh, maybe even, you know, you know, even ocelots, pumas, pumas and, and uh, jaguars would be very elusive, but you may have a chance of seeing more wildcats. And of course, all the monkeys, everything. So Corcovado is an add-on that if you want to push yourself, and again, when I say push yourself, it's a pretty, it's a pretty even trail. It has some, uh, some up and down, but nothing crazy. It's a little warmer because you're by the ocean, you know, so you have to be comfortable with, with heat. Uh, and you go about four to six hours. It's more or less, that's the, the length of the trail. And right. people just came back from it and were just, they had so many photos, so many great memories. And so it's worth it if you want to add that on to, uh, to Absolutely. Your and I think out of the, out of all the trips that we've run to Costa Rica so far, I think everybody signed up for Costa, Corcovado. We haven't had anybody that's not, but we, we, we put it on as an extra because we, you know, we do have a few members for whom ah, it might be a bit much. So you can still see all the rest without 
you know, but but this is like this is the the the, the you know the climax of the hikes on the trip. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so the climax. <laughs> the that, itself, right? It's just everything you'll see there is just incredible. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And you mentioned as well, dolphin watching and mm-hmm. whale watching. Whales, you know, are tough at this uh, particular time of the year. Um, it's not typically, I think, a migration time of the year for the whales to be passing by. But then again, there might be a few it, hanging it, around it, the neighborhood. It is in Uvita, but we're going to be on the Osa. And the Osa is more June, July for whales. So that's why right. you like you won't see whales, but you could potentially see a whale shot. That would be a really amazing thing. But definitely the dolphins. We really are looking for dolphins. And yesterday we saw so many so many yeah just yesterday just yesterday oh, <laughs> fant- a little bit fant- of a <laughs> fantastic um so uh overall 13 days of uh, uh of really amazing stuff in costa rica some incredible uh sites from the the cloud forest up in the highlands and the central mountains and all the way down to the osa uh this is a great trip it's become as i say one of our most popular trips i think our I think this trip that you just came back from was um, was like literally sold out in like, a, you know, a month last year um, mm-hmm. at this time last year when we introduced the trip. Uh, yeah. And then we scrambled, we add another on another one on December. So we've gone we've gone right off the bat. We have two trips. Um, and I just want to say a couple of words about that. We'll get to the questions that are coming in in just a second. Um, so here's the pricing for the trip. Of course, as usual, everything in Canadian dollars, I think the single supplement is is pretty reasonable as far as single supplements go. The lodges don't kill us too much on that. So um, it is very solo traveler friendly. Um, there are two different departures. They are slightly different. Um, our first departure from the 10th to the 22nd of January um, has four nights at Rio Chiripo and four nights at Luna Lodge. So an extra night up in the uh, cloud forest uh, and then the second departure from January 22nd to February 3rd, so exactly a year from now, has um, an extra night down on the OSA. That is the difference. Um, we were discussing this before as to which one is better. Um, that's a tough call, right? Because there's so many great things to see in both places. You could go for either one. If you like cool air a little bit more, you might go for option one. Uh, and have the extra night up in the, the 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 higher altitudes where the air is a little cooler. But apart from that. <laughs> exactly. And honestly, um, like some people want to even book again. Like that's how much they loved it. Uh, and some of them, you know, would have stayed forever at Rio Tripo and some of them would have stayed forever at Luna. <laughs> so yeah. it really is the same trip. It's the exact same trip. Just, you know, you can choose yeah, if just, you want. Just because of the availability of the lodges, we had to divvy up the nights a little bit differently. But if you do have a preference and if you really say you want one over the other, um, then it's best to book early because we do anticipate that these trips will uh, will not last terribly long and we cannot get any more. We won't be adding any more on because they're fully booked. They're fully um, booked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So all these trips, and I'm not going to go through all the details here, uh, but the program itinerary contains all of that as well as the additional information documents. So we provide lots of material. There is a fair bit to read, but we do that on purpose so that you can um, really immerse yourself in all of the details uh, about the, the the you know the trip the itinerary itself and then all the other sort of FAQs if you will frequently asked questions and then of course Paul and Barb um, can answer any other questions um, and if they can't they'll go to Martine and they'll get your question answered so lots of inclusions on there of course the airfare is separate as with all of our trips um, so that we can get you from wherever you live in Canada down to Costa Rica um, and that uh, Corcovado hike that Martine was talking about is also an extra. Um, in case anybody doesn't want to do it. Um, and that's perfectly fine because you've got a lovely lodge to go to. So it's you're not going to be bored at any point. If you sign up early, um, uh, that is before March the 15th. Uh, and uh, again, I don't mean to be trite, but it's 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 quite possible this trip may be sold out by the middle of March. Um, but uh, we'll give you a couple of hundred bucks off because the lodges appreciate when we firm up our bookings and pay them some money in advance. So we pass that on to you as we do with um, most of our trips. So keep that in mind. There is an early booking bonus. And we're about to take your questions. So if you do have any questions at all, that would be general questions that anybody might be interested in, please do put them in the chat box. Now you can type them into the chat box or into the Q&A box so we can address them. And I know uh, Barb has a few pending. Otherwise, if you think of something just after the webinar is over, 
um, or if you are watching the replay for the webinar, then drop us an email to either Paula or Barb. Um, it doesn't matter who, if you've already dealt with one, then it, it, as I say, they're, they're, uh, they both can answer all the questions that you might have. Uh, and we will get back to you on that. So Barb, let's entertain uh, a couple of these questions that have come in. Yeah, sure. So um, we do get a lot of questions about transfers. How are transfers handled when they arrive in on their chosen flight? Okay. All right. So we organize that for you. Do not have to worry about that. So as long as we have your information uh, as to when you are arriving, the hotel, or if you come in as a group, we send a group transfer and that's included in your package. So we take care of that. Right? Yeah. As long as you arrive on the beginning day on day one and you depart on the last day of the trip, uh, the transfers are included. Uh, uh, if you decide to come in a couple of days earlier, you have to look after your own transfers. But in San Jose, it's very easy and it's very inexpensive. So it's uh, we will give you all the guidance that's necessary for that, for those uh, for those transfers. And then everything else from day one until day 13, until the end of the trip, is obviously included in the program. So you, you're well looked after. And of course, you're, you're looked after by Martine herself, um, who... Uh, speaks Spanish fluently and uh, is uh, well acquainted with the local terrain. So I don't have to worry we'll about be, that. We'll be connected through um, a program that we use Telegram instead of uh, there's WhatsApp. Of yes. And we use Telegram. So you'll have access to me from the minute you land. So you'll have access to some support there if ever you need it. Amazing. Okay. Um, there's a question if um, people should or can bring uh, walking poles. Oh, definitely. Walking poles are amazing. I, I've told everyone in the group to uh, to grab, even, even if we, we at the, every lodge we have different walking poles, but every time we go out, I recommend to everyone to grab one if they didn't bring their own. So if you can bring a collapsible one, that's wonderful. If you're if you're just coming on with a carry-on, that could be harder, but as long as your <laughs> carry-on can fit a collapsible one, I definitely recommend that everyone brings one. It's so helpful. It's so, so helpful. Yeah. But it's, there and, are ones and, at the okay. lodges? Sorry. They are the ones at the lodges as well, but definitely if they can bring their own, they're even more sure that they have their own pole and they're good. But if if uh, if not, most of our lodges, like for example, at uh, Rio Chiripo in Luna Lodge, also at Savega, they, they have poles. So you can always just borrow a pole there. And I can tell you if you've, uh, from someone who never used to, uh, who poo-pooed uh, uh, walking with walking poles, I've started walking with walking poles uh, about a year or so ago. And I'll tell you, it is, you feel so much better you should be yeah. walking everywhere with walking poles, quite honestly. But anyway, that's an aside. Uh, <laughs> do bring them along. I re I recommend one. I recommend one. One Not for two. this trip is one because you are in the forest, so you don't have the always the room to walk with two. But it, you know, Correct. once you've tried them, you can bring one along, and you know, you get a good quality pair of uh, you know like uh, carbon fiber poles that are super light. You won't even know they're in your suitcase. Makes all yeah. the difference. One hundred percent. Next question. Next question is, if people arrive a day or two early, can we do pre-nights and post-nights? Which yes, we can. So we can. <laughs> those for you. I will say our hotel that we use is what we call a transit hotel. It's not one that you would want to come and spend necessarily three or four nights at because it doesn't have a lot of amenities. But if you want something that has more amenities, we can recommend another place for you. And most hotels will include the, the transfer from the airport to the hotel. And but we'll be happy to help you book additional nights if you'd like to do that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, And also just on that note with uh, going back to the walking poles, what type of shoes um, is recommended for this sort of trip? Oh, I always love that question because it's so important. <laughs> So the most important is you need good grip under your shoe and you need your toes to be covered. I personally recommend you invest in a what's called a water shoe or an amphibian shoe, which is a running shoe that goes from land to water and dries very rapidly. I don't recommend big hiking boots, you know, the ones with the tall ones with leather. Those tend to have a longer time to dry and also are very heavy. You want to go with a light shoe. We won't be doing, you know, backpacking. You know, that's why you need those big boots. Boots when you have a big back on your back, you need support for your ankles we won't be doing that so a good hiking shoe that has a good grip underneath and your toes covered is very important okay great um and just maybe going more i know weather was sort of talked about a little bit but maybe more specifics for that time of year what people can expect yeah, what temperatures are we talking martin uh both day and night for the the higher part of the itinerary and uh, also in the osa 
Okay. Well, we all know Mother Nature plays tricks on us all the yeah, time. But I will say, in general, we're in, we're in the tropics around the equator. It doesn't change that much. And just to give you an idea, the driest month in the country is March, and the wettest is October. So right away, you can tell we're outside of the the wet season, and we're outside of the complete hot season. The hot hot season is March. So in January, it's actually the best weather. December and January. December is actually colder, but January is still cooler. So basically, when we're going to be higher up in the in elevations, you could be looking at about 12 degrees as the lowest. Um, and so when we go for our early morning bird tour, you know, in December, I had gloves on. In January, I didn't. So just give me an idea. It's a glove versus glove. And again, Canadians, we tend to tolerate more cold than others. So but I would say you still want to bring layers. So you're looking about 12 degrees as the lowest. And then we're going up into the even to the 30s during the day. It's really nice and warm, but not not humid in the mountains. Uh, as we get down into Rio Chiripo, it gets a little bit warmer. So you're looking at about lower, maybe in the 15 degree. And again, looking in the 30 degree as the max. But in general, there in both places, you're looking about 28 degrees during the day, a perfect, perfect temperature. In fact, they say Rio Chiripo has the best weather on earth. It's just a well, perfect plant. And then when we get to the Osa, it gets much warmer, gets much more humid. Um, we won't get as, I think the lowest we probably have seen here is probably 18 degrees, but it's probably going to be around the 20 degrees at night. And then it can go, you know, in the highest of weathers and warmest of weathers in the pure sun, you could be going into the over thirties, you know, but in general, I would say you're looking at about 29 degrees during the day and it's a nice warmth. Again, it's not too humid because we're out of the rainy season. Uh, and then at night, it's a perfect, you know, even though we think 20, that's hot. No, and at night you may even find you want to cover up with a blanket and everything. So it's perfect. In my opinion, it's perfect weather the whole way through, but everyone's different. <laughs> okay. I think that's all the questions that have come in um, so far, but if people have other questions, they can always um, reach out to Paula or myself and we're happy to help uh, with those. And there's also an additional information document. So if anybody is interested in this trip, please contact us um, to let us know you have some interest. We'll send you the additional information document. Um, and uh, yeah, there's not a large group size on this. So the sooner the better on that. These lodges are not large. So we, 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 well, and we don't take big groups. So that's uh, easy on both fronts. But I think this trip that you just had was, was it 14 people, Martine? How many people did you just have on this trip? Did she freeze? Martina's frozen. Oh, she's disappeared. Oh, well, that was good timing. I believe it was, Barb, do you recall offhand? I think it was uh, I, Yeah, it was like, I think it was around 14. I think it was around 14. Mm -hmm. We just we can't take bigger groups because the lodges aren't bigger and we don't take bigger groups anyway. So it's easy. So it's a, it'll be a good size, um, somewhere between 10 and 14. Um, you've got Martine with you the whole time. And Martine is your host. And then, of course, we have the naturalist guides who are from these regions from these national parks and they are impeccable they are really 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 knowledgeable you will get more they're an encyclopedia of information and of course with martine's help we've sourced the best guides um going so if you do have more questions then please uh as we said drop us a note we'd love to have you on this trip it's been a very popular with with rave reviews um so do join us uh and in closing we have a couple other webinars coming up next week uh, if you're not watching the replay, otherwise you'll have to watch the replays of those too. But uh, next week, do join us for our live away to Cyprus um, for next year. This year's trip is already closed. Um, and as well as our Koh Samui live away, which we're going to be bringing to you live here from Koh Samui in Thailand, which is where I am now. I'm actually on Koh Phangan next door. So those two webinars next week on Wednesday and Thursday, um, stay tuned for those. Um, and many more to come. So thank you for tuning in today for this webinar. Uh, and uh, as always, and thanks for your uh, wonderful loyalty to Wheel and Anchor. Uh, and I look forward to meeting up with you all uh, in the near, near future. So take care and have a great evening. Bye-bye for now.